Okay. I think we're live. Yep. Okay. <laughs> we are live. Oops. <laughs> so, um, hi. Hi, Ryan. Let me put on your camera. I got to switch over different software. And there we go. Hi, Ryan. This is my friend Ryan. We're um, trying this live streaming thing out for the first time. Uh, together, we are in opposite sides of the country. He's in California and I'm in New York. So it's a big, huge distance um, between each other and the huge time zone shifts. Uh, it's a little bit rough. I've been up since about 3.20 this morning. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay, so um, let me open up the document that I have that we were going to um, talk about. Let's see. There we go. So, introductions. We are going to be talking with Ryan, which is on screen now, and me. Hello. Um, we, um, I guess, um, I guess, what do you want to tell people about you, your background, and kind of um, a little bit about yourself? You're Ryan, obviously. That's very cool. I think, um, I guess, a little bit about me. I think everybody on this channel at least knows a little bit about my kind of personal side. But professionally, I have been working in the creative industry for um, pretty much my whole professional career. I um, have been working in uh, animation and visual effects and teaching those subjects as well at university level. And I'm... Um, I have done this kind of stuff professionally before, but I think, um, like you, it'd be kind of nice to have something on the side that will, um, be kind of fun to do and bring in a little bit of extra money. Um, right now I pretty much only teach other than my YouTube stuff and my educational stuff that I do online. So, um, I teach at um, in New York and I teach people all about uh, 3D digital design and animation and stuff like that so it's been great fun I like the subjects I like working with it so it's exciting um, okay so um, I guess right now when we are talking with this live stream we are um, saying that we're kind of interested in pursuing creative professional business ideas and for me it's animation and for you it's going to be more of the um, audio side of things um, what kind of audio pursuits do you think you're most interested in the 
sang in the choir, but you know, you watch those, you can watch them all day long on YouTube, you know, the voice or America's got talent. And you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I'm really looking to get into the music business or be a pop singer or anything like that. But I do really enjoy being able to, to talk or MC or deli deliver just lines or so I'm, th for me, I think right now really where I'm at, I'd be comfortable with doing voiceover work maybe. Um, and then if that works out, maybe stretching out a little bit further, possibly doing voice acting. I, I, I mean, voiceover work is ostensibly voice acting just as the, the disembodied voice of either authority or or whatnot uh, as opposed to like maybe the broader range of characters that you might bring to people's ears as a, a voice actor doing like cartoons actually it's a funny story like when i was in high school i always one of my aspirations was simply to like yeah i want to be a voice actor in a disney animated film and actually, I was really surprised when I found out, you know, sometimes the person who does the singing and the person who delivers the lines are two different people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, cool. yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, like, I think just starting off, you know, maybe something easy, just reading copy. I guess that's the term. Like for jingles or like for like promo spots or things like that yeah second pieces we'll see we'll, we'll see how we'll see uh how self-conscious or uh, embarrassed i don't think you can do anything in the uh in the media realm if you're self-conscious or embarrassed you know uh, but we'll we'll see like, if i can you know read something that's really cringy and sell it anyways <laughs> i mean, bringing that professional thing and you know make it sound great do you think that maybe you um like do you want to pick and choose the type of jobs that you're going to at least start off with or do you think you would want to like take whatever comes your way that's a really good question you know i i think ultimately for me um hmm my biggest concern would be if I was delivering a product for someone that they're happy with it. So I might, I might probably shy away from things where I think, Oh, you know, I don't think I could deliver what they want, but then the, the, the question comes to, well, who am I to decide what they like? You know, maybe I, you just have to go for it. And if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. So it, it'd probably be more kind of along the lines of if somebody's interested in hiring you, then yeah, you work for them. I mean, unless unless you have other reasons to object to it. Yeah. I, um, I mean, for me, I feel like at least so far, everything that I have worked on, I've been kind of um, happy with overall. Although, um, I mean, at the time I had no idea, but there's some movie credits on projects that I've worked on that you're like, oh, wow, that, um, like I have been called by journalists and stuff because they are known as movies that were big flops and things like that. And I mean, working on the project for me was great experience and um, I learned a lot on it and things like that. But it's interesting that it, like some of those projects, I mean, some are like Academy nominated um, projects as well. But then there's those other ones that are complete flops and you kind of have a big pool of projects that are just like a, culmina a culmination of your work. I, I think that's interesting because like one of the things that you know, I, I'm sure people have heard before. We we learn from our failures. Like if you succeed in something, but even if a project was a big flop, I, I don't think that means there was anything any failure on 
your contribution to the project. And it was like, wow, I didn't even know they blocked me. I, I didn't know you worked on anything that you actually had been reached out to by journalists. <laughs> and that's, that's a pretty cool thing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's happened a few times. And um, it's more of the movies that I've worked on that I'm actually on the credits that I get contacted about. Um, because I've worked on a ton of movies that ended up not being, um, like, I'm not listed in the credits because I'm, like, a company that was subcontracted, that was subcontracted, that was subcontracted to work on a shot or something like that. Um, but there are some movies that I worked on that we were either, like, the main studio that worked on it or we were the main subcontractor working on it. So... Uh, in those cases I get and then there's like a whole bunch of like weird rules on how you get into the credits and stuff like that so um I mean uh, like some there's like some really awesome movies like I worked on Benjamin Button but the I'm not on the credits for that movie for example I mean so it, it, that kind of just goes to the whole thing about how the credits are important. That's how you get acknowledgement for your work. And then maybe, maybe if it is a terrible, terrible flop, you're thankful when you're not on the credits. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get called yeah. up later on. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I no publicity on either is bad side. Publicity. Well, on either side, I haven't granted any like interviews or anything like that. But I just think it's interesting that I even got contacted. Um, but yeah. It's neither here nor there, I think. So, um, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, you kind of, you asked me that, I, I, well, I imagine maybe, uh, you know, viewers of your channel are already, inter already intimately familiar with your creative interests. Uh, I would say, like, on this channel, mostly the video stuff that I've done, because I've done a lot of, like, vlogging type stuff um i did go to school um for like digital filmmaking and i went for my master's degree working on that for a while and um that didn't pan out which was really interesting like i went and uh, i went for a year and i got straight a's in the classes and um then they re-reviewed my um my what is it the not resume um uh, it's escaping me like your grades from my undergraduate my grade point average and i from my transcripts so they re-reviewed re it like a year they were auditing or, or something and then like the school that i went to was nationally accredited but it needed to be a regional accreditation to be accepted into the program and um, so, like, even though I got straight A's in all their master level classes, they told me I was not qualified to be in those classes. So they gave me a refund, and then I basically lost out on all those credits. Well, that's like a double-edged sword. It was like, they gave you a refund of your money, <laughs> but they can't take away everything you learned and all your experiences in those classes. So it's like, hmm. But by the same token, you didn't get your little permission slip. Yeah, that's true. But I, I feel like I learned a lot in that um, process. And I think it was definitely enough of what I needed for the YouTube stuff that I've been doing, at least on the video recording side. Um, and then I've spent a lot of time with 3D, so that's my main thing, working in 3D and films and video games and stuff like that professionally. Um, most of my experience with that has been more on the technical side, so, like, if you have a character, making sure the character has, like, the bones and the muscle systems and hair flows right, also, like, explosions and effects, or even a lot of compositing and color correction and things like that, green screening, so... It was kind of a lot more technical. Um, I personally, part of why I want to kind of start my own side thing is because I want to be able to work on projects that I get more creative input on rather than kind of doing something that's super technical that's just like, it makes other sh people that are doing their creative stuff 
work, um, like actually work and work properly. But like with the creative and like I professionally, I ended up getting most of my jobs as a creative. So I would come in as an animator or I would come in as a whatever position I applied for. But then when I was there, they learned that, oh, he, he knows programming. So let's stick him over with the technical directors because they do all the programming stuff, which was amazing job security. But then at the same time, it was like removing a lot of the creative potential of what I wanted to do when I got hired at these places. So have you ever just like gone into one and just said, "Ah, I'm not going to let them know I know programming? (laughs) (laughs) No, I think that um i mean i enjoy the programming side don't get me wrong but i feel like um having an opportunity to work on some of my own projects gives me at least a little bit of creative um outlet to let that other side um work as well so let's see let's look at our outline um okay so um, we kind of been talking quite a bit about our, our interest in the um, creative business areas and um, fleshing out kind of the ideas. Um, and something that we kind of talked about is the potential of um, with the landscape of the way the world is now. Um, we can do a lot of the work online and that offers a opportunity to monetize kind of some of our creative outlets and um, maybe, I guess, um, you could talk to a little bit about the idea of why you think monetization might be a good way to start, like, experimenting with some of your, um, creative business ideas or even, um, also, like, um, uh, what potential ideas you're thinking, of how you can monetize what you want to work on. Yeah, well, so, hmm, you know, when I, when I was a young man, I was once told, if you're going to do something as a profession, never, ever do it for free. Uh, so w- when you're, we're talking about, like, the possibility of monetizing, doing stuff for voice, you know, my, my first thought is, like, hey, this is great. Now that everything's online, I'd really like to try to do something in collaboration with Alejandro, my friend. I haven't seen him in a while. He's like way over on the East Coast, you know, and we can we can kind of work together still, despite despite time distance and 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 whatnot. So, you know, the the thing that I don't know a whole lot about is the monetization part of it. You know, I think probably probably the easiest way might be to like try something like Fiverr. I haven't, I haven't looked into it, but it sounds like they do, they do all the administrative stuff for you. You just can post a gig and people will message you and say, Hey, I think I'd like to, to have you record something. So I know that one of the things that I need to prepare is, you know, upping my audio quality. So one of the first things I did was I went out and bought a mic. I'm pretty happy with the mic, but I think uh, I think eventually you end up either upgrading your mic or getting a new mic, having like 10 or 20 mics. I don't know if I want to be that person, but who knows? It's I don't feel like I'm that person, but I have like five mics already <laughs> <laughs> well i mean like i mean to the microphone thing it's uh there's a specific tool for a specific job and until you start getting into it you never really think about well a microphone's a microphone uh and then you start looking at it or if you start doing it you can discover well there's all sorts of different environments different sounds and they got a microphone for each one of them. Uh, right now, like, I'm trying to figure out 
how much do I want to invest just to get started if I don't like have like a super long range plan on what to do? Uh, other ideas, right, are just like people who read Reddit stories on YouTube. They don't even put their face on there. It's just audio. You know, maybe there's some some uh, video editing. So there's an image, something for you to look at since it's YouTube. But, you know, they're just reading entertaining YouTube story or entertaining Reddit stories. Or like, oh, I think I could probably do that. And I know uh, my wife has suggested uh, well, you could read sonnets or poetry. <laughs> I think um, that kind of leads into one of the ideas that I've been thinking of being able to um, collaborate with you. And one of the things that I think that was you seemed kind of interested in a possibility is that one of the things that I was thinking of doing uh, and I actually have started do doing is doing um, illustrated kind of um, children's book and then you doing kind of a voiceover audiobook version of it where we can do the 3D visuals in actual like motion or something like that. Um, so yeah. I, I'm really kind of excited about a potential collaboration with something like that because I feel that it's like at least... Um, from what I gather with how you're kind of explaining and talking about what you want to do with audio, it's kind of like a reading a short audio book. It's kind of like a good way to get your feet wet into some of the concepts of that. Absolutely. I mean, gosh. Um, you know, with, with anything, like you watch videos uh, on other people trying to do what you're thinking of starting to do. And uh, I know one of the things I've found intimidating is it seems like all the voiceover people they're like one man studios or one woman studios and they're even doing a lot of the preliminary audio engineering uh passes on on their audio files before they send them out so i mean there's there's a lot to learn but i would absolutely be excited to be able to collaborate with you and work on you know a, a story i think that'd be great i think it's I, I don't know i think it's a fun idea and um i for me with this um project i um did right now it is um written out i wrote the whole thing already and i started kind of coming up with some of the style ideas for it and it is uh, 24 pages right now. And I actually sent it out to a uh, children's book editor to review the copy. They call it a manuscript, I guess. <laughs> um, and I was like, I just wrote a story. And I w was explaining it as like writing a story or whatever. It's like, and then they're talking with these fancy words like manuscript. And I was like, it's a kid's, kid's picture book. <laughs> But um, I like I went through what you were talking about earlier. Like I actually went on Fiverr to find the um, the editor for the book, and the um, it was only like twenty bucks for a copy editor, which I thought was kind of interesting. And it's like twenty bucks for five hundred words or a thousand words, something like that. that's that's really cool i was like i guess the one thing i i always wonder about fiverr is it was like do they have resumes or like how do you know what you're getting but i guess maybe like the price at the price point you could afford to procure that service maybe a few times over until you get the one that you like and then you know in the future just like well if it's that kind i'll go back to that person if that kind to that person uh, in some I ways, I, oh, good. Oh, yeah. I, I had a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. in, in animation, which comes first, typically? Like, if, if you're animating a, a film and there's dialogue, do you guys, the dialogue and all the audio, that's usually laid down first, and then you animate to that so that the uh, kinetics match the audio? 
there is a lot of back and forth in animation so um in and it depends at what kind of level of production you're at so if you're a one-man show it's different than if you were at pixar for example (laughs) Um, they got a lot more people a lot more time and resources but um i guess i have more experience with kind of that medium or large studio so i can kind of tell you how it works there and then i'm working right now on trying to figure out how it works on a smaller end (laughs) but with the bigger studios typically what you do is you got a set of storyboards which are just like drawings so they um or they do a script so some places they'll um, storyboard out and they write the script through kind of storyboarding um, brainstorming sessions and then they write it in kind of in tandem together with those storyboards so that way they can kind of get the main beat then they'll um, show the voice actors and a lot of times the directors and the animators might put some scratch audio down to kind of show the actors kind of what you're thinking of how this would go so you can get a rough timing and then you can actually um, give them the information i mean then you let them record then um once you get that that's what they call a um animatic so you put their audio together with the storyboards give that to the animators and the the animators can use that for the timing for their final animation and then from there um it goes back and forth a little bit if there's like tweaks with timing or um, editing and things like that that you might need to adjust for So, so you have like the opposite problem where sometimes people are learning how to scale a process up and figuring out what doesn't work when you get to a larger scale, but kind of going the other way around. How do you scale it back down for limited resources? Yeah, definitely. The limited resource thing is kind of like being... I guess you can say right now we're attempting to be solopreneurs or something like that. And we have very limited, like whatever we have access to, like on a normal basis is what we might um, use right now. But the um, scaling down is kind of an interesting perspective that um, obviously is happening, but I never kind of viewed it that way. But it was just like, how do I do it? But it is a scaling down of this big process. But eventually, hopefully, at some day, I'll be able to actually like hire teams of people on full time or something like that and get bigger and bigger. Maybe 10, 15 years. I don't know how long it takes to grow. But it would be cool if one day to be able to like maybe get a team of people and be able to um, publish like a feature film or something like that one day. Yeah, I mean, so I, th- I think that's the one thing that needs to be commended and admired by you know all, all these solopreneurs and, and content creators, uh, I think. That limited resource is all blood, sweat, and tears. Personal blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I woke up at like 3.30 earlier, before, just a little bit before 3.30 today. And then right now where I'm at, it is 9.30 p.m. And I'll probably end up going to bed around 11 tonight. And then wake up again at 3 a.m. Maybe 5 this sleep. day. <laughs> Oh, but okay. Yeah. You're going to sleep in. <laughs> I'm going to sleep in. I'll, I'll wake up at five tomorrow unless I get woken up. Sometimes I find like, I mean, I have a family and so I have two girls and two dogs and a girlfriend. So like sometimes just like in the middle of the night, the dog will bark and I need to be lit out. So <laughs> I have to wake up, go downstairs, open the back door, let them out and then things like that kind of interrupt the sleep as well. So I'm just trying to think like when you got started, how, how did, how did you, how did you get into animation and, and the creative outlook? I mean, for myself, like at one point in high school, like it was an idea 
and then it kind of went away. And then just more recently, I picked it. I, I started to rediscover my interest in it because of all this Zoom meetings and everything and, and wanting to put your best foot forward, or like wanting to have the good audio or try to improve my video quality. I, what, but you've, you've been in this like since forever from what, since before I've known you. Yeah, I think I was really lucky growing up with my dad because he was very adamant, like, while we were growing up, saying that um, when you go work professionally and you go out doing things, pursue what you're passionate about working on because you will be successful if you go that route. If you are he the example he used to always give is like you can be pa a passionate janitor and be successful at life like if you are your goal in life is to be, be the best janitor in the whole world and you do it better than any other person and you get to the point where like um you are you can build that up and like maybe you start hiring other janitors and you train them and then you start creating your own company so you can go um clean up different businesses in your local area and things like that like he would explain it in a lot more and better detail than i'm doing right now but the idea was that at anybody um at if you're passionate about a folk a thing that you're doing you'll figure out a way to make money and a living if that is kind of what your goal is so um that's why i kind of went straight into animation because i was interested in animation and visual effects growing up i didn't have access to resources to be able to do that at that point like the computer and the software that you were using was not available like it is right now for free online like i was um teach like um i remember going to school when i was going to school for the main software that i use for most of my professional career it is maya um and maya at that point i think i paid like fifteen hundred dollars for an educational license of the software for one year <laughs> and that was when i was going to school so it wasn't accessible like it is now because now you can get that same license for free as an educational version and you can download it online back then you had to get it from you had to call the manufacturer and then they would mail a box out for you with all the software cds and everything oh man fifteen hundred dollars for a one-year educational license <laughs> yeah it wasn't even commercial you know um going back to what your dad was saying i think i think somewhere i've i've heard a quote you know pursue your passion and success will pursue you. And I think that fits kind of really well with what you were raised with. That is much more eloquent than what I just said. I loved your little one or two line paraphrasing it, of it. Well, it, it's not mine. I stole it from a movie that was <laughs> recommended very highly to me from Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll like name drop it. Three idiots. <laughs> Three idiots. Let me see if I can find it on Amazon. I think I think it might be streaming on Netflix. Just oh. you know, free plug for Netflix there. And Three Idiots. It doesn't really sound like a movie that I would have been into, but it was highly recommended to me. And the quote goes something like that from that movie. Oh, I think I found it. It is a Bollywood movie. It looks like they have it on Amazon Prime. It, that might be. So let me copy this. I'll put a link in the stream right here so that people can find it if they are interested. It is an Amazon affiliate link for anybody that wants to click on it. Um, yeah, and so I don't, I think it's free to watch if you have Amazon Prime, so I wouldn't get a kickback, I don't think, for that. But if you bought anything, 
if you clicked on that link, I would. Not that I'm saying to do that. I'm just saying that is my disclosure. That it is. And, and my disclosure is that it is Bollywood. I, I've gotten flack from other people like, what? Bollywood is uh, cringy. <laughs> no, it's, it's different. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. It's still good. I've, <laughs> I've seen a few, and I mean, it is different. And I feel like movies from around the world are that way like you look at euro films compared to hollywood blockbusters they're very different but i mean it doesn't mean that they're less valid as a movie it's just they're targeting a different audience yeah i I think that it's like you know there's a formula for pleasing your audience i i heard like one time what was it house had a formula You, you could like set your clock by it at this time, this little plot twist is going to happen. And at this time, this plot twist is going to happen. And, you know, it just everyone has a different formula, just like everyone has a different flavored food. But it's all good. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at my little notes again. We have, we're talking about um, monetizing and potentials. I guess I haven't talked about kind of what i've been thinking about for my monetization right now um one of the things that i was looking at is uh, the kind of starting out with the book route and then doing kind of an audiobook version with you and then um linking it with the audio and part of the reason i was thinking of that just visually with the 3d because 3d takes a lot of time effort and it's very technical and time consuming um, especially if you want to do animation and the timing and everything like that. But if I can do something that are kind of like moving stills in 3D and work focus on design skills, um, that becomes a lot easier. And it, I feel like it's kind of like a stepping stone into things that can be bigger. But it gives me an opportunity to complete something that has kind of a... Um, relatively quick turnaround that is from beginning to end and I can complete a whole like product and professional like asset that I can put out into the world and be like hey this exists and it's completely done and it was produced slash directed by me in conjunction of working with other people like you yeah that sounds like a really good plan moving forward i i know we've spoken in the past about like you have like a whole bunch of pots uh, on the stove as it were cooking (laughs) yeah definitely i have like a lot of ideas and something that uh, my girlfriend tells me all the time is that i get really passionate and really excited about an idea and then i work really hard and burn myself on it out on it And then, like, I see a bunny trail, and then I go down the next bunny trail, and then burn myself out on that next bunny trail, and keep on going through, and I have a tendency of not finishing anything. And that's part of why I wanted to work on this project first, is because it's something that I can have a finished product and the end for, and it gives me a start, it gives me an end, and it's kind of a shorter timeline that I can flip around. And one of the things that I was doing is I have a, for anybody that's watching the stream, a little production uh, planner book. So I've been writing in it and the it's called like a priority planner, I guess, because it's a little bit different than just like your regular like daily scheduling thing. It is It is a daily scheduler, but then it has specifics where the whole book is focused on one specific goal that you're working on and um so and each day you put everything that you're working on the day but then it reminds you okay this is your one goal for the next three months and um make sure you write down what are you doing specifically in this day that makes you move towards that goal and i mean it does it in different ways but um i feel like that is kind of really kind of thing good thing that has been helping me the last couple of weeks to stay a little bit more focused and hopefully finish completely through this project and i mean i've finished projects before obviously but i have a consistency to like just get excited about ideas and then 
kind of fizzle out and then get excited about something else just jumping back and forth between projects and something that happens a lot is that i'll um like be like hey i was working on a project maybe six months ago that i really liked why haven't i worked on it then i start working on it again you know i i'm i am 100 percent guilty of the same thing a- and when you say rabbit holes yeah ev- well i think you said rabbit trails i call them rabbit holes go down into <laughs> a deep dark rabbit hole trying to work on something and you lose sight of everything else because you kind of are just so focused on it. And having said that I am 100% guilty of that, what it reminds me of is it sounds like an area where you can apply project management skills. And I think the acronym was SMART goals, but I don't remember what each of the letters start stand for. Oh, but yeah, it's I have essential. heard about that. My boss talks about smart goals a lot at work. Oh yeah, you know, like you go to any any uh, business uh, seminar or or anything project management, they'll talk about smart goals. I I don't remember the S, but essentially setting the goals, okay, making sure I found it's it. measurable, accountable. Yeah, actually, if you found it, go for it. It says um, ooh, pop up. <laughs> okay <laughs> so it says s is specific so something that is simple sensible and significant then uh measurable meaningful and motivating so something that you can measure achievable um relevant and then timely or time bound so that you have a end i guess so that's yeah, what it- smart is I think some of the times I, I hear uh, the A is like accountable. You know, gosh, tell someone that you have this goal that you're going to finish by this time so that they can hold you. I mean, not even that they have to hold you accountable, but you're going to hold yourself accountable because you know somebody knows that you said, hey, I said I was going to finish this by this time. I need to hunker down and, you know, finish my goal. <laughs> And I've heard, hold myself to account. Yeah, I've heard both ends of that. Like I've heard like studies that say accountability is like super important. But then I've also heard like tell nobody your goals because if once you tell people, you get the gratification of just telling somebody about what your goal is, and then it makes it less likely that you'll actually complete it or even start it. That's interesting. But, you know, just telling somebody the goal fails the M part where it needs to be measurable. How much do you measure just telling someone? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Or it's like you get that measure on there, your metric. You're like, I don't know. I, I need to uh, animate 400 frames. I don't even know if that's a lot or a little. But it, it's something you could certainly count. You're like, oh, I only got the 390. I didn't make it. <laughs> I only told somebody about it and I have zero frames. <laughs> yeah, I think right now my goal that I have for the next three months by the end of the three months is to make a thousand dollars through CGI Nerd a month in a month. So um, right now, currently, I make about a hundred bucks with it, which is nice. It's nothing to laugh at, but. Um, I definitely want to grow it from there. Yeah, I think, what, what is it? That, that whole diminishing returns, like the amount of effort is where I get kind of scared. Like, oh gosh, I need just little gigs. But yeah, the, the dream, that that's the dream is uh, setting up a, a revenue stream that's passive. I mean, you know, it's active, but it has residual revenues as well. That's that's the dream. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's definitely the dream. And I think one of the things that I feel that is kind of exciting about the potential about um, doing a business and things like that is um, having the opportunity to um not be reliant on anybody else but yourself so if like the business fails 
it's because you didn't follow through and didn't do things. I mean, there could be other external things, but in the end, it comes back to like, hey, it's your responsibility to do things. And if things fall apart, it's your responsibility to put it back together and keep on moving forward. So I feel like having that autonomy is very kind of satisfying in a way because it makes you less reliant on others and it also kind of makes you feel more empowered in some ways i i I can certainly identify with that uh one of the things i struggle with though is just like at at some point you run out of time in the day to get <laughs> everything done and i guess you need to be able to reach out and ask for help or get something off your plate but there is still that uh ultimately you're responsible for the end product even after it gets off your plate you still have some follow up to make sure that whomever it went to it's going to come back in a good condition so speaking about um products and kind of things that um kind of like your product what you want to do moving forward what kind of steps have you started making i know you talked about getting the microphone already but have you looked into done doing anything have you done any research have you what have been your first steps so far in your uh, creative entrepreneurship journey so yeah you know like oh gosh I've, I've watched a lot of videos and i've talked about it but what have i actually done so i i have this this microphone which I, th I think there might be like a minor defect with the microphone so i'm thinking okay i'm going to return this microphone and i think i want to get the uh a uh, microphone that's a little bit more versatile so that I can record in more places or or like I don't I don't want to make a I don't want to buy like a, a sound booth or a whisper room necessarily but uh, you know a lot of people starting out they'll they'll record in their closet because there's a lot of fabric and clothes there that helps absorb the sound and one of the things I discovered is I bought a really awesome USB microphone that's very easy to use, plug and play. And I think it sounds great to my ear. But the thing with USB is it's not extremely portable. And portable recorders, I mean, I guess a quality portable recorder, they seem to all be XLR. So right now I'm looking at, well, since... The button on this one seems to be finicky, you know, maybe I'll return it and, and try to get a microphone that has both USB and XLR capabilities so that I can, I can try my hand at getting to a, a absolute, a sterile sound environment to try to record something in, that's really dry with no reflections or standing waves i'm not sure that i know what those sound like but maybe once i get into a space where they're not there and listen to a recording of my voice in that space you know i'll maybe i'll get to hear it but have you considered maybe renting some time in like a professional booth and seeing what the difference might be i have not I have not considered that. I don't know. I, I think actually that would be relatively safe, right? Booth, only room for one person. That's like, it sounds like socially distant to me. You're completely <laughs> isolated, right? Right. I, I guess the only question is like, well, did they sterilize the booth after the last person used it? <laughs> <laughs> Or, or how close are you going to get to this microphone that somebody, you know, was just eating the other day? <laughs> <laughs> I would assume at least that with the microphones that they can, sp like, wipe it down with, like, a Clorox wipe or something like that. I would think. I have no idea. I would have to, I would have to do some research on that. And I know, like, 
um, sometimes people do rentals as well. Like they'll rent, not like the sound booth, but they'll rent um, the actual microphones and you can get those mailed in for rental per day price or something like that um, because there's some expensive like thousand dollar mics and things like that and or thousand plus um if you were interested in figuring out that i mean if you were ever around new york we have a recording studio here at the university i work with work at so we can get you some time in there all you need is the cost of a flight to come down here round trip cost of a flight or gas and a <laughs> lot of vacation time <laughs> but i think that sounds absolutely awesome i i i need to get out more maybe we need to find some way to get a professional project that pays us to work on it and then that can be what we use the money on is to fly you out here to record it and that's just kind of a way to get you more experience but it would give you a professional um experience and add something into your resume or your portfolio you're scaring me i, I don't <laughs> think i'm ready to go that fast yet or that far but i mean certainly like i have a tendency to do that to you right like you, you were <laughs> like I was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool? You you were telling me, wouldn't it be cool to do like live streams and YouTube videos and stuff like that? And it's like, okay, let's start. Let's do it. And originally I said, let's do it tomorrow, but then we couldn't get everything that we needed right away. So that's like, okay, let's do it a week from now. Yeah, ev everyone needs everyone needs that friend. You know, that friend who will give you a push. I mean, hopefully it's uh, after all the bungee cords have been secured, but... <laughs> Well, yeah, we didn't do it the next day without a webcam or other stuff that you needed. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, gosh, that's if if I thought that I could do voice and it was somehow easier or more enjoyable than my day job, then, you know, sure, I'd pursue it. The thing with the the thing with the creative arts is you, you can have a job where you have a salary, regular pay, and it's consistent and reliable. And then uh, performance, it, it seems like, gosh, that's a, uh, what is it? Boom or bust. You have uh, wet seasons and dry seasons and and there's also kind of a uh, a tournament style where only a few people are going to get really high up there and making a lot of money. I, I don't know how I high up you get to where I'd be making comparable money to my day job, but it's probably probably doesn't have to be too high up there. I don't know. Something again, this again, requires more research. Yeah, something again that came from my dad, like that he would say is um when i would bring up like well it's really hard there's like almost nobody that does it and can make a living doing that and that kind of stuff and I, what he would retort with is like somebody else is doing it right why not you i mean there's a lot of people that just don't start because of that same mentality that you're espousing right now saying hey i can't do it because it's such a small percentage so by actually taking a few steps you're already past like so many people that didn't even start trying so that makes it even more likely for you well it ultimately it kind of goes down to like how much effort and time you can put into there i apologize for if you guys hear my dogs <laughs> barking um or like it, but you think about like playing football how much money can you make playing football well, you can make millions and millions of dollars if you play for the nfl and there's a lot of people who play football, but yeah, not everyone plays for the NFL. And a lot of that is, you know, work, hard work ethic. And then there's, there's some of that is uh, being prepared for opportunity to show up. I think some people call it being lucky. 
uh, other people will just say when preparedness meets opportunity that's the same thing as luck yeah another thing that i kind of think about and i was um my aunt she's a doctor so i was kind of talking to her about it and um i mean she loves her job but just the idea because she's thinking about going into law now and then she was doing research and she was saying oh there's like a lot of like l- lawyers that are out of work right now because there's th- there was a flood of people going into the industry so there's not as much work as there used to be at one point so like 20 years ago or more that people would say oh go into a secure job become a lawyer or g- do like these high end jobs that pay a lot of money right but then you don't know what's going to change in the future and what if you like hate doing it but you are only um, doing it because it was the safe option. So you can fail doing the safe option or you can fail doing something that you enjoy. Well, yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. And, and, and it sounds like there that you have a problem of oversupply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I everyone's mean, just going to it. But also, like, think, again, 20 years ago, there was nobody really making any money playing video games but now there's people making millions playing video games isn't that just mind blowing i don't think any of us thought that you could make money playing video games when you were a kid and somewhere there was that one kid who's like when i grow up i'm going to play video games and he did it i don't know (laughs) actually i I don't know if there's anyone our age making money playing video games, <laughs> but, but yeah, like that's, wow. And it really wasn't possible like 20 years ago at all. And like people, like I remember my parents, like don't waste your time playing video games. It's you're just wasting your life away playing video games. But now it's like an option for somebody. Well, I, I think kind of like the point you're driving at, if you want it bad enough, even if it doesn't exist, you can make it happen. I think I was, uh, I guess recently, was it Mike Saxon passed away? And I, I, I don't know that many people know who he is, but uh, he was really big in, you know, getting the World Poker Tour started and popularizing Texas Hold'em. If, if you enjoy playing poker, you, you probably would know his voice if you heard it, like instantly. And when he was starting, he, he had a vision for what poker could be. And it sounds like, you know, through his efforts and his his hard work ethic you know, a lot of what he thought could come to pass did because of you know his efforts in pushing it forward yep so we're reaching or yeah we're reaching the one hour mark from when we started streaming right now so i guess um wrapping things up what i'd like to see and ask is kind of what do you feel before our next stream that we do as long as you enjoyed everything i'm gonna keep on doing this um actionable steps that you want to take um to work towards this goal that you are wanting to do becoming a voice actor a working within the voice industry well i i think uh Let's see, I need to make sure I have a smart goal, right? So it needs to be specific. So I think specifically, since I'm planning on returning my microphone, and specifically, I'm interested in having a USB microphone for this sort of activity where we're live streaming, uh, but also having XLR so I could pre-record stuff in a sound treated environment so i'm i'm specifically i'm going to look to getting a microphone with both usb and xlr uh, output jacks on it so that i can use it in both of those applications 
also I, me- measurable. I mean, there's just one microphone. <laughs> Time you frame, it. I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like binary, on, off. Exactly. True or false. Um, additional uh, goals. One of the things I don't have is a portable recorder. And all the recorders I, I've seen are XLR, so I'll probably get an XLR cable and, uh, well, okay, I, sh- I shouldn't pile my plate high because <laughs> I want I want to be realistic and do baby steps, right? Um, one of the other things I was thinking is maybe I'll invest in getting a shock mount for my microphone. I don't know if... Uh, how much of a big difference that'll make. But first, I want to make sure I get the microphone so I don't end up with the wrong shock mount. Very cool. I think that sounds like a good starting point of steps that you're taking, and then we can meet up and work on this. Um, It sounds like your microphone has been working great in the setting that we have right now, so I'm glad that there were no technical issues. (laughs) Um, So for me... Um, I am still working on the the book. Um, like I said, I'm waiting for the editor to get back my um, edited book and then kind of read through it, see if I'm going to make any tweaks based off of that and what tweaks I'm going to make and whatnot, clean it up. And then I have been working on the art style, but I'd f- at least like to get a the first illustration done. Um, I'm hoping I can get this whole like illustration wise um, done by the end of the month, but there's Thanksgiving coming and stuff. So maybe the first week of December. So I think that would be a kind of good timeline to get. Um, it's 24 pages, but there will be 12 illustrations only. So um, that shouldn't be too bad for the stills. And then at that point I can, um, collaborate with you and be able to transition i mean before that i can probably give you the edited version of the final manuscript (laughs) will it come with a scratch track (laughs) um probably not but maybe (laughs) i'll give you creative license to work on um how you want to present it and then i can go back and forth and direct you Oh, I love that. I, I, I think it reminds me of things where I've seen uh, was it movie trailers that have been recut and completely changes the, <laughs> the yeah. tone and uh, um, color of the entire trailer. <laughs> yeah, editing is definitely important. So that is, um, it can affect a lot of things. And I mean, I don't know much about music, so... I have a library of um, royalty-free music that I purchased, so I might most likely try to use some of that, and if I can't, maybe find somebody on Fiverr to do the music for me, because I know nothing about music. Well, I know you're trying to wind us down, because we're running out of time, but I have all sorts of questions that I'll have to save for next time. Okay, yeah. That would be great. So, um, goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Ryan, very much. Thank you, Alejandro. And we will, um, we're not 100% sure if this is going to be the final day and time that we're doing it. Um, we'll solidify that before next time, but we will see you guys next time. Maybe next Thursday, maybe not. We'll see what the next day is, but hopefully within a week or near to it also remember it's thanksgiving have a thanks happy thanksgiving everybody